Hello everyone. Today we have a special guest uh, from Ireland, uh, Dublin, Ireland, uh, Boris, uh, and uh, he is the Smart City Program Manager there. And uh, uh, we will welcome we welcome Boris. Boris, thank you very much for joining this. Uh, you have a vast experience, and our topic is also the related to your uh, management. Uh, for example, smart city. So I will ask you uh, that uh, how do you define this smart city in practical terms, and what is this, and how about your experience in this field? Well, to be honest, the term smart city is something that we uh, really, really dislike. We would like to have a different <laughs> different term because it's rather boring and um, it doesn't tell the full story. In reality, every city should be smart in, in the context of... Um, so what I see as a smart city is a city who is willing to embrace emerging technology and uh, test that with with its uh, domain and with its citizens. Yeah, yeah that right. would be, um, I mean, any technology, any, it doesn't have to be, just so you know, it doesn't have to be um, technology. It could be also a way of engaging with citizens. So we can always explore what would be non-smart city. So non-smart city would be just, uh, I don't know, every five years reaching out to citizens to, for them to vote for a new council. And that would be it. While on the other hand, smart city would be engaging with its residents more frequent and include them in, um, in decision-making and planning and future of the city. In general yes nice and uh, uh, what do you think uh, are the biggest uh, misconceptions about smart city projects or something like that again from my experience so we have a bit challenge we are mostly trialing technology so department that i'm in we can consider this department as a r d department for a city so research and development but it doesn't mean that we are doing a full scale of, I don't know, take any technology and then uh, we just trial it on, on a small part of the city. And uh, misconception would be that we are responsible of uh, having this use case uh, apply applicable to entire city. Uh, so the actual deployment is something that the city has to do on their own in the end. We we can, we in essence, we help um, trialing the technology to see if this will work. We do a uh, lots of baseline measuring and then we see what will happen uh, after the technology is deployed, for example. Okay, okay that's nice. And uh, for example, uh, uh, can you walk us uh, through the real world smart city initiative in Dublin, in Ireland, if you have some ideas, uh, case studies? Well, there, there's, um, as a smart city kind of uh, department, let me just explain that before, we are between the researchers and um, cities. So on one, one side, we talk to academia, and on the other side, we talk to a city. So we are someone in between those two. And we want to make sure that people from academia can reach out city. And of course, people from the city can understand researchers. So on that topic, we have a, one of the, I'd say, big projects currently ongoing. It's called Urban Splash. The project is about, I don't know how much you know about Ireland. Uh, in Dublin, we, specifically, we have a problem with the water quality and it's not the best and um, when you measure the water quality uh, you take a sample take it to the lab grow the culture it takes maybe two three four five days maximum to get the results but during those five days people are not aware what 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 was the water quality so the project urban splash is about to solve that um, by deploying state-of-the-art sensing technology that are that were that will be developed by a local university and our partners from estonia 
So those types of uh, sensors should give results in a near real time in affordable and a very precise and um, and in a very precise way. Yes, so that's I one of the it. projects. Good. And, and, and we and, will uh, test that on a, only on one site, right? And yes. if the technology proves okay, <laughs> then we will we have to probably scale it up to whole Dublin and maybe even beyond. Very nice, very nice. And uh, also, uh, for example, uh, uh, if I say that uh, what technologies are critical for scaling smart uh, solutions in cities, what technologies are uh, critical and necessary for that? Mm -hmm. Well, the, one of the fundamental uh, aspects of smart cities, uh, obviously, technology in the context of Internet of Things. Um, on that topic, critical would be uh, in a city connectivity for communication and uh, power, power source. Because if we want to deploy technology, usually let's take it, um, for example, sensing technology, right? So uh, when you sense something and then um, you, you need to send the data somewhere, right? So that data needs to be uh, transmitted using some kind of communication technology. And second of all, if you're um, uh, deploying a sensor, then you have to have a power source required for it. Maybe. Appropriate power source. I mean, we can always use the infrastructure that we have, I don't know, street lights, for example. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, also one thing, for example, you also uh, are the uh, 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 prof assistant professor in uh, faculty of organization informatics and uh, you completed your phd definitely in from croatia and uh, uh, and also you are the program manager so how you manage this for example uh, uh, more than 15 years you uh, uh, you already spent and you are spending in the teaching and academia and also you are uh, 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 as the smart city program how you manage these things and uh, how you say, say that these double roles are possible for anyone who want to play like that well it's no longer double i i was a teaching teaching assistant at university of zagreb and i quit my position and the experience that i got from there is something certainly that's something that helped me a lot in my current position i'm technically also employed by Trinity College Dublin now and I'm a research fellow there working as a smart city manager as you as you said um, so in, on you are kind of correct as well managing this double role is, is a challenging because like I said I am between local authority and uh, academia and I have a two hats one hat is a research and the other hat would be um local authority i, I wouldn't say representative but uh, interface towards um research community so it is challenging to balance of course because i'm not the i'm not too deep into lo local authority and i'm not deep e either in research as well so um I think I'm, I'm not the only one, just to be clear, there are others uh, in other parts of Dublin as well in a similar role. So I think we're doing a great job at communicating with uh, both sides and I think it's okay. Very nice. That's nice. Oh. And, and Boris, what are the uh, some challenges you have faced in the implementation of the projects regarding the smart city, something like that? Uh, challenges well if we are talking about the project that heavily relies on citizens so one of the challenges would be uh, working with people and relying on people participation because this is something that we can't count on and uh, when we organize event the amount of people that will show up is uh, rather unknown. So uh, we try not to put uh, citizens on a critical part of a project, 
of course we would like to emphasize all of our projects to um, have some kind of activities at least with citizens in the terms of dissemination at least and of course um, obviously funding is one of the big challenges here because we kind of try to be sustainable in our operations by uh, uh, leveraging on other funding sources not only local authority or our um, research partners so that probably it's national level and uh, and uh, eu funds yes that's nice that's nice and uh... It's uh, to make it sustainable, as you have mentioned, uh, so we need the funds. So how easy is that uh, to get the funds or uh, how important that academia academia should uh, push the smart city research forwards? Well, yes. Um, so you, you are correct. Academia, which is, a, is exactly what we did in Dublin, they are the ones who are pushing things forward uh, because in, in its nature, cities and local govern, governments are not into a business of research. So any new idea should come from whoever is um, trained to do that. And that's obviously academia. So I think the model that we have here in Dublin is perfect. I don't see any better way of uh, joining those two. So uh yes academia is the driver for new new technologies new innovations uh, new applications and also academia is the one who again we also have a great combination of academia and local authority in any application process because we so if you take any any um european project right having at the same in the same consortium having local authority and university uh, that's a that's a very strong consortium uh, at the beginning so that's our big advantage and of course we gather lots of businesses around us where we um, also collaborate in project applications and of course projects itself that's me that's and, and uh, what does you see the future of smart uh cities and look like and what should it be like that i think ai i mean ai is pretty much everywhere and uh, so when we say the i mean the current smart city the big i don't know driver would be to is data currently so getting more data getting data that is more relevant for service delivery is extremely important today. But in the future, I think, so if you think about that, we are just getting data and then we do something. So it's rather very reactive. So what I'm missing here is a proactive element. And I think AI uh, could be something, especially general AI, would be something that would be very proactive in local authority. So I think that's the future of smart cities and um, yeah, AI, more connectivity, more. Another aspect that we need to tackle lately is, uh, of course, resilience, but not only climate resilience. I'm talking about cybersecurity res resilience and resource resilience. And what happened recently in Spain is a proof that we ca cannot simply design our system with the hope that um, I don't know, there's going to be a power all the time. So we have to have uh, at least backup system for backup solution for critical systems, let's say critical communication. When that goes down, we have a problem in the city. And the cities are actually the perfect candidate to solve that issue by defining the infrastructure uh, in, a, in a different way very nice that's nice thank you thank you boris so there's a brief session but it's very uh, comprehensive in all the things and the final uh, thoughts uh, before ending the session just please uh, have the final thoughts you want to share please final thoughts 
yeah yeah final comments you want to share about uh, if anything is missing or yeah. just concluding I, it here yeah i think the future of cities very much relies on people who live in those cities if people consider their city where they live as just a place to sleep work and live that's not good so we need to get out of our homes and have impact on our city which is our common and uh, uh, we all own the city so we need to treat it as our own and respect the city very nice very nice uh, thank you boris for the, your this brilliant session and uh, we appreciate uh, uh, your thoughts no and thank your you. insights for the special and thank you and have a nice time thank you thank you so much bye bye